This lecture, I'll be talking about uh, a little bit more about uh, derivatives of uh, functions, and then I'll talk about the idea of analytic functions, and then uh, and then and then we'll get into complex integration. So, just to remind ourselves, we said that if uh, f of x y, okay, f of z is equivalent to f of x y, and this is written as uh, u of x y plus i v of x y. Okay, then uh, then the condition condition. Uh, so we had the condition. So uh, if f of z is differentiable at some point, okay, I won't I won't bother writing that. Then uh, u of x equal to v of y, u of y equal to minus v of x. So a condition. So so this is a necessary condition for differentiability. Okay, so this is necessary, and uh, we can also show can also show that this is sufficient. Okay, uh, sufficient condition if partial derivatives exist, if u of x, uh, u of y, v of x, v of y are continuous. functions okay i won't i won't bother proving this okay but the point is that uh, in general if you just had continuous functions and its derivatives are also continuous then uh, this this uh, the cauchy riemann equations okay are actually enough to check whether the function is differentiable if f of z is differentiable at z0 and any neighborhood of z0 that means uh, any uh, neighborhood of z0 okay so that so that means uh, that is z minus z0 less than some small some very small number okay that means <laughs> that means is differentiable in every point immediately around z0 okay then you say then f of z is analytic at z0 okay so 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 this is the idea of analytic functions analytic is like a function that is differentiable at z0 so if it is differentiable at z0 and any small neighborhood around that then it is analytic at z0 okay on the other hand it's uh, uh, if f of z is differentiable everywhere okay then it is called entire function okay now uh, so an entire function is basically basically analytic everywhere okay now uh, what is what is interesting is that uh, you can have a you can have a function may be non analytic in a, at a point or along a line or in a region okay what i mean is uh, very is something uh, very obvious but it should be it should be noted okay when you are so so this is a complex plane so uh, when you when you are when you are looking at functions of a complex variable they are functions of x and y okay so they are functions so that means for any point you have a value of a function any point in this plane you have a value for the function okay so now now so at any point you can ask does the derivative of the function exists okay so it might exist everywhere 
or it might not exist at uh, you know you, you might have a you might say that the derivative exists everywhere except at few points ok. So, these are these are uh, uh, points of non analyticity or you can have it exists everywhere except along certain lines. This is a line where the function is not analytic or you can have a function that is analytic everywhere except in some region. So, you can have a point where the function is non analytic, you can have a region where it is non analytic or a line that is non analytic where it is non analytic ok. So, so the point is all, all these uh, see, see when you talk about analyticity of functions sometimes you will say that ok it is analytic everywhere except at a certain point, sometimes you will say it is analytic everywhere except along a certain line sometimes you will say it is analytic everywhere in some region, but not analytic outside that region ok. And all these are uh, terms that will that uh, that will be involved especially when you are doing complex integration. Now, uh, we have seen this now, now, now we can what about complex integration. Okay. Now, uh, just as uh, if, if, if you have integral f of x dx ok, then you put a limit a to b ok. So, now in this case, in this case a is a value of x, b is a value of x, these two are scalars and you know how to do the integration ok, going from a to b ok. Now, equivalently for complex planes, you can have f of z dz integral from a to b ok. Now, a has a in this case has uh, both an both an x and a y coordinate b also has an x and a y coordinate ok. So, now, now uh, in this case things get slightly more complicated than the single scalar variable ok and we already saw this when we were doing vector integration that if you have a point A and you have a point B ok in the x y plane ok. Now, when you integrate integrate a function going from A to B you can go along different paths you can go this way you can go this way you can go take a path that goes like this. So, you can have many different paths ok. So, so therefore, your complex integration has to be defined as a contour integral as a path integral or a contour integral. So, so what you have to write is integral along a contour c going from a to b f of z dz. Okay. So, so, uh, so you define some path okay, going from uh, A to B and then you do the integration ok. So, this is the basic idea of comp so, 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 so what is important here is that uh, complex integration involves path ok, path or contour. Okay, and we already saw this when we were doing line integrals ok. So, so we are already familiar with with how to do how to do contour integration ok. Now, uh, now let us look at uh, look at closed paths ok. So, so suppose I have this x y and I have some closed path ok. So, so I will just call it C as this closed contour ok. And uh, now, uh, what you write is uh, you can write integral over a closed contour f of z dz and I uh, will put a C below the integral ok, just to integrate that you are going over this and let us take it in some direction, let us take it in the counterclockwise direction ok. So, so this is how I define my path and I am writing and you can define this integral in the usual way ok. 
okay. Now, uh, so now, now what is the value of this, the, the value of this integral, okay. So, so how do you calculate the value of this integral? Now, now in order to do this, we will, we need to know, so it depends on whether f of z is analytic in C and region on C and in region enclosed by C. Okay. So, so this whole region that is enclosed by C and this contour C itself, okay, we have to check whether your function you have to check whether your function is analytic here or not. Okay. Okay, you need to check whether whether it is analytic in this region. So, so how does that help? So, there is a theorem called a Cauchy Gursat theorem, which says that uh, if f of z is analytic in C and and uh, uh, on C and in region enclosed in C and enclosed by C, then this closed integral over C of f of z dz equal to 0. A really amazing theorem because uh, it says that if you have an analytic function, then it is integral and if you are integrating in a region where it is analytic, then your integral will be 0. Okay. So, it is a really, really powerful theorem. I mean you just, uh, so it, it says that you know if you, if you take a function and you choose your path properly, you can get its integral to be 0. Okay. It also means that uh, where your function is not analytic, okay, where the function is not analytic, that is where the integral will be, will be non-zero. That is the next thing that we want to see is where is this function non-analytic and uh, what does that do to the, um, to the value of the integral. Okay. So, integral of functions are non-zero around points of non analyticity okay so it is the points where the function is not analytic that is where your uh, your your integral is non zero okay now uh, the points where the function is non analytic okay so this is where your function is uh, discontinuous Okay, and uh, and its derivative does not exist. Okay, now uh, so 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 let's get the idea. Well, let's look at uh, what is so so we need to classify points of non-analyticity. Okay. So let's take uh, one example. We'll we'll call uh, so so we'll have a uh, poles. Okay. So if f of z is equal to g of z divided by z minus a raised to m, where uh, m is a positive integer okay so and g of z is an analytic function then z equal to a is a pole of order m 
okay, your function is not analytic at z equal to a, okay. So, and f of z is not analytic at z equal to a and analytic everywhere else. Well, uh, okay. So, so I'll, I should cl clarify one thing. Okay, so I'm I'm just looking at a function that is not analytic only at one point. You can also have functions that are not analytic at many points. So, so you can have f of z is equal to g one of z divided by z minus a one raised to m one plus g two of z divided by z minus a 2 raised to m 2 plus so on. Okay. So, so uh, where uh, g 1 of z or, or g i of z is analytic at a i. Okay. Then, uh, then uh, where so, if you, if you can write this function, sometimes you can write this function as a sum of many poles okay? and, and the only condition is that g 1 of z should be analytic at a 1, g 2 of z should be analytic at a 2. Okay? So, then a i is a pole of order m i. Okay? So, uh, so, the point is I mean if you use sometimes you can write it as a sum of all these poles also. And uh, what it means is that uh, is that f of f of z is not analytic at uh, is not analytic at z equal to a one a two and so on. Okay, you can write it as a sum. Sometimes you can write as a product. Sometimes you can even write. Uh, Sometimes you can have f of z is equal to g of z divided by z minus a one, z minus a two. This is uh, g of z is analytic at a one, a two, a three, etc. Okay, sometimes you can write in this form also. In fact, in fact, these two are. Fa uh, oh, I forgot the m ones, m one, m two, m three. These two are actually quite equivalent. Okay, so so I mean you can you can do, you can you can you can you can write. You can write this in this form. Okay, now the point is that uh, so so poles are important for integration so uh, i'll just uh, i'll just say now 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 case 1 simple pole at z equal to a so uh, in other words i say f of z is equal to g of z divided by z minus a so, if you have a simple pole at uh, z equal to a, okay, then uh, then uh, integral f of z dz over a closed contour C, okay. So uh, C that contains a, okay. So g of z is analytic, okay. So this is equal to closed integral g of z divided by z minus a dz this is exactly equal to 2 pi i times g of a okay g of a is defined okay g g is analytic at a okay and so so, uh, this integral is just 2 pi i times g of a. This is what is called as uh, residue theorem. In other words, uh, we can also note that integral 1 over 2 pi i, uh, sorry, 1 over z minus a 
over any closed contour containing A, okay. So, this is a contour that contains z equal to A, this is equal to 2 pi i. Okay. So, this is also this is also sometimes referred to as residue theorem. Okay. Now, uh, pictorially what is happening is the following that uh, you have a point z equal to a and uh, and what you are doing is you are you can integrate over a contour containing z equal to a. Okay. This is my c Okay, and uh, C is this contour, and it's analytic everywhere except, except, uh, let's put it in purple, except this point, z equal to a. Okay, now now this integral is uh, two pi i, this close integral taken in the counterclockwise sense. This is closed integral in counterclockwise direction. So, the convention is that in the counterclockwise direction it, then you get plus 2 pi i, in the clockwise direction you get minus 2 pi i. Okay. And if you have if you have g z divided by z minus a it is just 2 pi i times g of a. Okay. So, so this is this is a very nice theorem because it helps you deal with uh, all the points where the function is not analytic. So, so, wherever the function is not analytic you can just do this. Now, what is amazing is the following that uh, just as in the Cauchy in the in the Cauchy Gursat theorem you could choose any contour okay, and so long as it is analytic within that uh, within that contour okay, your integral will be 0. So, here you could take any contour Okay, any contour and uh, you just have to worry about the point of non analyticity. So, so pictorially you have this that if you have x y okay, and uh, let us say my points of non analyticity. Okay, so, so, these are the points where the function is not analytic. Okay, these are the points of non analyticity shown in purple. Now, I can choose my contours. So, I can choose a contour like uh, let me show them in red. So, so the contours where integral is 0. So, I choose a contour like this, its integral will be 0. Choose a contour like this, its integral will be 0. Choose a contour here, its integral will be 0. Okay. Now, uh, now I can choose a contour all the way up to here right next to this its integral will still be 0 or I can choose a contour that is huge that is that covers all these things, but but just avoids these points it goes this contour will also have integral 0 all these contours will have 0 integral. Okay. On the other hand if I choose a contour if I choose a contour that that contains one point this will have a non zero integral but the value of the integral of this contour will be same as taking a contour like this taking a bigger or smaller contour it will be the same as taking an infinitesimal contour around this point all these contours have the same value i could take a contour you know much bigger contour and uh, i just have to its value is just determined by the single point inside it by the non analytic point. Similarly, you know I could take a contour with two non analytic points Oops. I could take a contour with two non analytic points. Now, this contour okay, let me show it in a slightly different color let me take green for this. So, I take a contour with two non analytic points. Okay. Now, uh, this will have the same value as a contour I could take this contour very narrow contour like this and these two would have the same value. Okay. So, so uh, what I can do is uh, so, so complex plane integration
determined by by poles okay now now the next question is what about higher order poles okay and uh, this is where you get uh, what is called the generalized residue theorem okay so so suppose you have a pole of order of order m okay then uh, at z equal to a so so then integral close integral f of z dz and this contour contains a within c okay so then uh, this looks like integral g of z divided by z minus a raised to m dz close contour c okay now the value of this integral okay now now you have z minus a raised to the power m okay and when you have z minus a raised to the power m okay <coughs> see if if m was equal to 1 okay then the value was just related to the value of g of g of a times uh, uh, 2 pi i now if if you have z minus a raised to m then uh, you just have to make a small modification you leave the 2 pi i as it is you leave g of a okay but you are going to take a derivative of g of a okay you are going to take a derivative okay you are going to take uh, the m minus 1th derivative of g of a okay so so the idea idea is that uh, in this case you are uh, you do not just have so so you can see when m equal to 1 you take the 0 derivative which is just the value of of uh, g of a so this is this is d m minus 1 g of z divided by d z value is z raised to m minus 1 evaluated at z equal to a okay so so uh, this is the only change that you have to make okay and uh, once you once you make this change okay then you can calculate uh, you can you can calculate uh, any kind of uh, any 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 kind of uh, integrals involving complex functions there's just there's just one additional factor here okay. this derivative okay so there there there, there is a factor of m minus 1 factorial here okay so this is this divided by m minus 1 factorial so so uh, so so it is the m minus 1 derivative evaluated a divided by m minus 1 factorial now now we can we can do this in a slightly we can we can write this in a slightly different form okay we'll just rearrange this okay and uh, this is known as the cauchy integral formulas for cauchy integral formula so 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 let's let's first look at uh, so we know that uh, integral g of z divided by z minus a dz equal to over a closed contour containing c equal to 2 pi i g of a okay so 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 i write this as g of a is equal to 1 over 2 pi i closed integral g of z divided by z minus a dz okay so so this is uh, value of function at this is integral formula for value of an analytic function g of z so g of z is an analytic function at z equal to a so if you have any analytic function the value of the function at z equal to a can be written this way okay now you might say that this is not very interesting okay and but but you can you can use uh, 
you can you can also write the mth derivative of a okay i can write this as m factorial divided by 2 pi i okay and now i have the same integral over the closed loop i have g of z divided by z minus a raised to m plus 1 dz okay m equal to 0 1 2 etc any positive power so i can take i can take so so this is the integral formula for the derivative so if i want to take a derivative of, of an analytic function g of z okay uh, then i can i can take its derivative in this way okay so so uh, residue theorem is probably this is uh, i mean these two things are together called the residue theorem okay and uh, basically uh, i just i just i just rewrote what we wrote here i just rewrote instead of m m minus 1 i took m okay so then i have uh, i have m factorial and uh, this becomes m plus 1 okay so uh, residue theorem helps helps do complex plane integration so 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 basically the message that we want to give through this is that integration over complex plane can be easily okay I emphasize the word easily easily carried out if we know know uh, all the poles so i will conclude this lecture here okay and uh, in the next lecture what i'll show is uh, how this complex contour integral can actually be used to be used to carry out uh, integrations not just of uh, of uh, of functions of complex variables but also of of uh, functions of real variables okay so sometimes uh, integrating certain functions in the real uh, in integrating certain real functions is it seems very difficult and uh, by going to the complex plane you can easily integrate them okay because you can use all these residue theorems and you can find out where the poles are and uh, you know once you know the once you know where the poles are then you can easily do the integration using residue theorem okay now residue theorem is a really remarkable theorem okay in fact uh, this coupled with the, this and the cauchy gursat theorem which says that uh, if you take an analytic function and you integrate it over a in a in a region where it is analytic then the integral just gives zero okay so these two theorems are extremely powerful and uh, they are in fact the basis for why complex variable theory is so widely used in in uh, many different branches of uh, science and engineering uh, so uh, I, I will conclude this lecture for now thank you